Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through Myasthenia Gravis, and you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash Myasthenia Gravis, or in the Neurology section of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. Let's jump straight in. Myasthenia Gravis is an autoimmune condition that causes muscle weakness and gets progressively worse with activity and improves with rest. Interestingly, myasthenia gravis affects men and women at different ages. So a typical patient is either a woman under the age of 40 or a man over the age of 60. There's a strong link with myasthenia gravis and thymomas, which are tumours of the thymus gland. Around 10 to 20% of patients with myasthenia gravis will have a thymoma and around 20 to 40% of patients with a thymoma will develop myasthenia gravis. Let's talk about the pathophysiology. First, we need to look at motor nerves and how they communicate with muscles. And this is done at something called the neuromuscular junction. At the neuromuscular junction, axons of the motor nerves are situated across a synapse from the postsynaptic membrane on the muscle cell. The axons release a neurotransmitter from the presynaptic membrane, and this neurotransmitter at these junctions is called acetylcholine, and this acetylcholine travels across the synapse and attaches itself to receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. The acetylcholine stimulates the receptors, and this leads to muscle contraction. So in order for the motor nerves to communicate with the muscle cells, they need to release acetylcholine and this needs to bind to receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. In around 85% of patients with myasthenia gravis, acetylcholine receptor antibodies are produced by the immune system. And these antibodies bind to the postsynaptic neuromuscular junction receptors or the acetylcholine receptors and they block the receptors. And this prevents the acetylcholine from being able to stimulate the receptor and trigger muscle contraction. As the receptors are used more during muscle activity, more of them become blocked up. And this leads to less effective stimulation of the muscle with increased activity. There is more muscle weakness the more muscles are used. This improves with rest as the receptors are freed up for more use again. These antibodies also activate the complement system within the neuromuscular junction and this leads to damage to the cells at the postsynaptic membrane and this further worsens the symptoms. There are two other antibodies that can cause myasthenia gravis and they cause the other 15% of cases and these are antibodies against muscle-specific kinase which is shortened to musk and antibodies against low-density lipoprotein receptor-related protein 4, or LRP4. Musk and LRP4 are important proteins for the creation and organisation of the acetylcholine receptor. Destruction of these proteins by the autoantibodies leads to inadequate acetylcholine receptors being created and organised, and this causes the symptoms of myasthenia gravis. So how do patients present? The severity of symptoms between patients can vary dramatically. And they can be mild and subtle in symptoms or it can be life-threateningly severe. The characteristic feature is weakness that gets worse with increased muscle use and improves with rest. So symptoms are typically minimal in the morning and worst at the end of the day. Symptoms most affect the proximal muscles and small muscles of the head and neck. So this leads to extraocular muscle weakness, which causes double vision. We call this diplopia. Eyelid muscle weakness, which causes drooping of the eyelids. And we call this ptosis. Weakness of the facial movements. Difficulty in swallowing. They can get fatigue in the jaw when they're chewing food and they can develop slurred speech. Let's talk about examination of somebody who has symptoms of myasthenia gravis. 
There's a few ways to elicit the fatigability in the muscles. You could ask them to repeatedly blink, and this will exacerbate the ptosis, so it will cause worsening of the eyelid drooping. If you ask them to look upwards, so upward gazing for a prolonged period of time, this will exacerbate the double vision or the diplopia when you ask them to move their eyes from side to side again. And if you ask them to repeatedly abduct one arm at the shoulder, so lift their arm up out to the side, and ask them to do it 20 times, this will result in unilateral weakness when you compare both sides. If you see somebody in an OSCE examination that you think might have myasthenia gravis, check for a thymectomy scar because they might have had a thymoma that's been removed. And you can also test the forced vital capacity to check the strength in the muscles of respiration. So how would you make a diagnosis? A diagnosis can be made testing directly for the relevant antibodies. So you can test for acetylcholine receptor antibodies which will be there in 85% of patients. You can test for the muscle-specific kinase antibodies or the musk antibodies in around 10% of patients. And you can check for the low-density lipoprotein receptor-related protein 4 or LRP4 antibodies, which will be present in less than 5%. It's worth getting a CT or MRI scan of the thymus gland to check whether they have a thymoma. And there's a test called the edrophonium test which can be helpful if there's doubt about the diagnosis. But let's talk about that edrophonium test. Patients are given an IV dose of edrophonium chloride and an alternative thing that can be given is neostigmine. There are cholinesterase enzymes in the neuromuscular junction that break down acetylcholine. So they reduce the action of the acetylcholine in the neuromuscular junction. Edrophonium or neostigmine if that's used, block these enzymes and stop the breakdown of acetylcholine. And as a result, the level of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction increases and these drugs briefly and temporarily relieve the weakness. So the aim of the edrophonium test is to improve the weakness temporarily, which will establish a diagnosis of myasthenia gravis. What are the treatment options? for myasthenia gravis, we can use reversible acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, usually pyridostigmine or neostigmine, and these increase the amount of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction and improve the symptoms. Immunosuppression, such as with steroids or azathioprine, can suppress the production of antibodies and improve the condition. And thymectomy, surgery to remove the thymus gland, can improve symptoms even in patients that don't have a thymoma. There are some options for monoclonal antibodies that can improve myasthenia gravis. The first is rituximab, which is a monoclonal antibody that targets B cells. And by destroying B cells, it reduces the production of antibodies. This is available on the NHS if standard treatment isn't effective and certain criteria are met. There's also a monoclonal antibody called ecolizumab, which is a monoclonal antibody that targets complement protein C5. And this could potentially prevent the complement activation that's caused by the acetylcholine receptor antibodies and prevent the destruction of the acetylcholine receptors. There's ongoing research and debate about whether the evidence is strong enough to offer this monoclonal antibody on the NHS, and it's not currently recommended by NICE. Finally, let's talk about something called myasthenic crisis. A myasthenic crisis is a severe complication of myasthenia gravis and can be life-threatening. It causes an acute worsening of symptoms, which are often triggered by another illness such as a respiratory tract infection, and it can lead to respiratory failure as the result of weakness in the muscles of respiration. Patients with myasthenic crisis may require non-invasive ventilation with BiPAP or full intubation and ventilation so that they can support their muscles of respiration and adequately get air in and out of their body. Medical treatment of myasthenic crisis is with immunomodulatory therapies such as IV immunoglobulins and plasma exchange to try to remove some of those antibodies that are causing this myasthenic crisis. 
Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to follow the channel and find out as more videos come out. You can also find written notes with illustrations on the Zero to Finals website at zerodefinals.com. And on the website, you can also find a podcast that can help you learn on the go, questions to test your knowledge, and the Zero to Finals books. Follow the link in the description to pick up a copy of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. It contains detailed and concise notes on 10 specialties in medicine and it's designed specifically to contain the key facts and guidelines you need to know for your medical exams. With mnemonics and Tom tips to help you learn exactly what you need to know for your exams without all the hassle. Follow the links to find out more.